Oh, hey, sorry. Kind of got wrapped up in what I was doing. Uh, we've been test benching this computer for a while, and I'm going to let you guys in on something, okay? Yeah, we have to keep this here. Um, a lot of PC builders, once you're done, the best way to benchmark your computer is with the director's cut of Daredevil. Um, you can see that we're pulling 999 frames, so, I mean, I think we're golden. And to be honest with you, it's just a great movie. Um, I don't see why they win an Oscar for this. I mean, it's really good. I don't really see what everyone's issue with it is. So, uh, sorry, I just want to finish watching it. No, it's a good movie. Hey guys, welcome to the very first PC build tutorial for this channel. I've always wanted to do one of these. Unfortunately, I did not have the disposable income to pull one off. So this will actually be a build for my parents. Um, their budget was around $1,000. Um, they did also, according to them both, we would like to have a computer that will not send a rocket to the moon. I don't know what that means. I think they're probably referencing my case because I do have a very large case. It does have a lot of lights. And I guess that's what they think my PC will do. I don't know. So we did decide to go the ITX route and keep the build as small as possible. So the case that we went with was a Fantex Evolve ITX case. Uh, we obviously went with the white theme because inside we'll have uh, white LEDs as well. We have the Ryzen 5 2600 uh, CPU. Now, this does come with the cooler. However, we're not gonna be using this cooler. Uh, we're gonna be using an AIO. And we're not using an AIO for the purposes of overclocking. I know, people are like, why? Why are you even doing that? And here's the reason why. Their office is very small. Um, there's already gonna be heat generated from the power supply. There's gonna be heat generated from the GPU. I did not wanna have heat generated from the CPU as well heating up their office. So if I can eliminate at least one of those, I know it could be the CPU and I'm not gonna bother water cooling a graphics card. So we're gonna keep this water cooled just to keep the temperatures down in the room um, and any heat that's coming off of this case whatsoever. So for the AIO, we did get a brand called Up Here. I've actually been heard a really good things about this. I've not actually used one myself, so this will be the first time. Um, I did open it. There are little minor gripes I have with it, which I'll kind of go over as we build this. Um, for the motherboard, we went for the ROG Strix B450i Gaming ITX motherboard. This is a fantastic board, fantastic board. For a hard drive, we went with the Crucial P1 one terabyte NVMe M.2 drive, and it is an NVMe drive, it is not a regular SATA M.2 drive. Um, for our RAM, we went with the Corsair Vengeance, 16 gigs, 3000 megahertz. So we do know at least Lyle can run 3000 megahertz, so we know that we're good on speed. Um, for the graphics card, we went with the GeForce GTX 1660 Ti. It's actually, I've heard a lot of great things about this graphics card, so we went ahead and purchased this for him. For the power supply, we went with the Corsair 750 watt semi-modular power supply. So without getting any further, we're gonna go ahead and start tearing stuff down and we'll go over the build and we'll go over it step by step so you won't miss anything. Let's get started. Okay, so here's the deal. Before we get started on the actual build, there's a few things I wanna go over. Um, a lot of people left comments on that Verge reaction video that said they're gonna be building a, a computer for the first time and they're worried that they're gonna make the same mistakes this person's made and, and everything else. But as long as you go back to your manual, you will not make these mistakes. Um, your manual goes over installing your RAM to every little piece that you need to do. So always, always, always refer back to your manual. As far as the tools go, um, I got this entire kit for around $12 to $14. Um, I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna get one of these. I'm not sponsored by them, it's just a toolkit that I use. Um, but for this build itself, I'll just be using the screwdriver and I will only actually be using two bits. I'll be using this bit and this bit, and that's it. Um, everything else in here I didn't use, but if I needed to, or I had something in here that I wanted, then obviously I have it readily available if I need to. But toolkit, you just need a screwdriver um, and your manual. That's all you need. All right, let's get to building. All right, so the first thing we're gonna tackle is actually prepping out this motherboard uh, for everything we're gonna install in it. But before we do, uh, actually any installing, I need to take these brackets off that were for the cooler that actually came with the Ryzen. Um, we need to take those off and put on the new back plate for the new IO that we have. So let's take this off. All right, and once you just lift up the motherboard, the back plate should just come right off. So we'll set that off to the side. So this is the new back plate that we'll have for the AIO that we purchased. Um, if you actually look at it, these two slots here 
are for the AMD and these outer X is for the Intel. So we need to go ahead and prep this out. We're obviously using AMD. So if you actually look on here, there's like these half circles that come with these screws. So when we put these on, if you just go like this and you'll simply turn it until it sinks into place, then we're gonna go. You take this washer, these washers, little plastic washers kind of hug this uh, and that'll actually hold it in place for it. All right, so now we gotta see how well this lines up. And it's perfect. All right, so then with that AIO comes these little plastic razors. Um, if you actually look inside of them, I'm sure you probably can't see, there's teeth on one side and then you'll just see the grooves on the other. The teeth side needs to go down so that it actually holds this in place. We now have that on and that's ready to go. The next thing we need to do is actually put in our NVMe drive. Um, and this one actually has two different spots we could put it in. So if you had two, you could put one back here and then the other one you'll actually put underneath this and we're actually gonna put it underneath this one right here. All right, so we're gonna set these aside now. Pay attention to these screws, as you can tell. One's long and one is short and you'll obviously see which one the long one is for. So we need to actually take this screw out. We have that on, now we need to put our screw on. Okay, so we have those in, we have the M.2 drive in, we have the back plate put on. Um, next thing we'll actually put on will be the memory. With these, you'll see there's a little cutout here and then there's a little notch here and you just need to line those up. So open up your RAM slots. And once you hear that click, you know it's in. And with the other one. We got that in and we're good to go. These are the screws that we'll actually be using for these posts. Again, we'll do that later. So we're gonna actually save this. Normally, again, normally we'll put this in. We put that in, we'll put the cooler in and then we'll drop it all into the case. Especially when it's a bigger case, you got a lot of room to work in. Um, so you can kind of position your cooler how you need to. For this one, we're just gonna leave it off for now. Now with this AIO, normally they'll have thermal paste already on here for us to use. There's a sticker on here right now. But normally there'll be thermal paste on them pre-applied. This one did not come pre-applied, but they gave you some uh, thermal paste to put on. However, I don't know what brand of thermal paste this is and they didn't tell you. I already use Arctic Silver, so I'm gonna stick with Arctic Silver for now. Um, but we're gonna leave this sticker on so that that way at least protects that copper. And we're going to go ahead and put on the um, fans. Uh, now, when we go to put this in, with the nature of the case and the room and with this, the way it is, just because I need to draw the attention to this. So if you see, we put it on this way, we got the cable shooting out the bottom of the motherboard. Um, this actually plugs the top of the motherboard. So no matter which way I look at it, this up here is not going to be centered. It's not gonna display like this. Um, it's gonna actually have to go on like this um, and then we'll actually end up mounting the radiator like that. Now, since we know that we're gonna put this on, this is gonna be at the top, and then this is gonna, again, be over this way and turn. Um, we know that the bands that we put on, we need the cabling to kind of come out the back this way. Uh, so that way it's faced more towards the back of the case. So we're gonna put these fans in. Uh, we have two of them. Here are our screw fans that we will need. Um, these are the long ones that we'll use that has threading at the bottom that we'll use to attach these fans to the radiator.
All right, so these are ready. Um, what we're actually gonna use is normally, sometimes when you have these, uh, the water block and the pump that's built in here, sometimes it'll have connections for your fans on this. This one does not. And um, this actually has a little groove cut out for this plate. Um, so when we have the Intel plate, we use Intel. This is the AMD plate that we use. Unfortunately, this is literally the only way you can have it. So that's why we're kind of stuck with this not actually being level and lined up properly. Um, but we'll pump, when we plug this in to our motherboard, we have, this is our CPU fan slot. This is for the power for your AIO, which is what we're gonna plug that into. Uh, the fans themselves, we will plug these in to this splitter here. Okay, that essentially shoots it off to one, and then that's where we'll plug that in at uh, when we actually put it in the case. Uh, for right now, we got this prepped, we have this ready. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and try to install this into the case, and we'll get this case prepped uh, with the motherboard installed and then we'll do the CPU and then we'll do this and then we'll add the fans and do the rest. For right now, I'm just gonna move this out of the way. So here's what we're gonna do. We got the front glass off. We're gonna go ahead and take off this back panel um, because we'll need this out of the way as well. All right, so first thing we need to do on the back side is there is these two screws, one here and one here. And that's what we're gonna be mounting the radiator to. And we're just gonna take this out just to get it kind of set up and ready. So it's one less thing we have to worry about. And you'll see there's black and silver, so we need to take off these silver ones. And then here's our plate. And this whole thing will slide out. We have that slid out, install this radiator on this plate. So we know when you go to put it in, you'll see the little screw. Uh, flanges right here. This is the front. This is the back. So when we put this on, we need to make sure that everything lines up with it. Okay, so that's right there is what we're gonna have to mount this on, keeping these two screw head screw holes in between that little uh, bracket right there. So you'll notice that when we actually go to screw the radiator in, it is in fact these small screws not the gigantic screws that this guy wanted to put in before. So we'll do that. I'm not gonna tighten these all the way because I'm gonna need to manipulate this as I go. So I'm gonna leave it loose so that I can still move it around. See, what will happen is this, let's say I tighten this. If I do, and this isn't lined up right, then I'm gonna have to loosen them anyway to reposition this. So I'm just gonna make sure I have all the screws in and then we'll tighten them from there. These again, you don't need to crank these. Once you start to feel a little bit of resistance, um, give it a little turn and then you're good. All right, so why we put it on this way, again, remember this is the front of the case. This will be the back of the case, but we can hide this and the tubing. Um, when we install this, will be put on this way. That's how we'll have that set up and done. And the tubing will have plenty of space in that case to work with. So for right now, we have this done. We have this screwed into this plate. We're gonna set this off the side again. Um, when we go to put the motherboard in, uh, we'll put the motherboard in, but before we do, I'm going to go ahead and put in the power supply and get that taken care of, um, and then route the cable so that once I drop the motherboard in, I can go ahead and plug in the things I need to. Then we'll put the CPU in, then we'll put the cooler on, we'll slide it in place, screw it down, and we should be good to go. But we do need to put this IO shield on. Um, now, a lot of times with these IO shields, they might not have lettering on there. So you just need to pay attention to how it needs to be put in. Um, since we do have lettering, I know that this will be at the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and push this in. Again, these will just snap in. I don't think I've really come across any situation where I went to go put this in and thought, man, I really need a hammer. 
Again, there's sometimes that these things can be a little bit of a pain in the butt and require a little more force, but not to that extent. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and take these off because this thing will lift up a way for us to actually pull our cables through later. So when you go to build your computer, like plan out everything that you're going to do um, and then do them. So that way I'm, I'll have it here and I can drop in my cables through here or through this little section back here. And that's probably where I'll route the power for uh, the GPU. Um, so that way we can do some cable management and hide that cables from showing. All right, so now we're actually going to put in our uh, power supply unit. And this is our power supply. This is a semi-modular power supply. And for those that don't know what semi-modular means is the 24 pin and the CPU are part. You cannot disconnect these. These are part um, of our PSU. So we need to actually add in uh, power for our graphics card, which you'll see, it'll say six plus two PCIe. This will be right here. This will be for our graphics card. And then um, only because I know this because I did this before, um, I do know that I need a Molex connector because um, our back fan, even though that plugs into the motherboard, there's another Molex connector that comes off that powers the LED. So we do need to put this in. Um, so we'll go ahead and install that as well. All right, so our power supply is in. Uh, we're just gonna need to route the cables that we'll need. So you'll usually know with your 24 pin, it'll probably usually go through this bigger section here. Um, we don't need, we're gonna loosely, we're not gonna cable management anything right now. We're just gonna run our cables through. We'll put our motherboard in, we'll connect everything, and then we'll come back to the back and pull what we don't need out and then do some cable management to it. So we do know that for our CPU, this will be our CPU power. And this will actually be up here. I actually think I'm gonna leave this out for right now. I'm gonna leave this out. I'm not gonna put that in yet, I'll do that later. All right, so we need to get the power in for our graphics card. All right. So we got that in. The next will be our Molex, but the Molex is actually gonna be up here uh, because we're just gonna pull the cable through here and plug it in um, for our back fan. But for right now, we will leave this stuff. Um, let's position this. We know that for this power, Molex, we need to get out of the way. So this is gonna be our USB 3.0, our HD audio, and then of course we have uh, the power switch this is a hard drive LED, and then we will have our power switch. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and drop in our motherboard. We have our motherboard here. Gotta make sure these are down all the way. And then we're gonna go ahead and drop in our motherboard. So we have that in place, now we need to screw this down. So this is actually, this motherboard only actually takes um, four screws. Now this is the portion here I was talking about. If I would have put the fan in and installed the radiator, I would have a hard time plugging everything in and putting the screw in and plugging the power in. So that's why I was kind of holding off on doing that until last. But normally I put the CPU in first. All right, our 24 pin is in. All right, the next is going to be the HD audio, which I kind of wonder if I were to take this plate off like it now, it's not gonna be enough room. All right, so we're actually gonna back out this USB 3.0 because we need to bring it through here to plug in. Um, if I try to bring it out here, and I actually ran into this before, that if I try to run both these cables out from the bottom, um, especially for the HD audio, it has to go around this PCIe slot and over the top to get to this. So it's probably better for us if we just went this way with it. 
Now, I can tell you sometimes with these USB 3.0s, as you start moving stuff around, it's easy for it to just become unplugged all of a sudden. So, it's something you have to kind of go back and check up on. Now, I want to run this underneath this one. Alright, so again, for our HD audio, there's five on top, three, um, no hole, and then another hole. So you'll know where you need to plug that in at. Hide this. I don't like the way it looks, but I tried going from here underneath, but I have to take this plate off and then it's kind of like puts this bubble curve off and it kind of smashed. I didn't want it to ever smash everything down. So uh, we're not going to do it that way. For now, we need to also go ahead and hook in our power for the CPU. We have that set up. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and do our CPU. Okay, so for the CPU, you'll notice there's pins on this one. Um, usually on the Intel, the pins are actually on the socket and not here. Um, so we need to make sure that when we put this in here, there will be a little triangle right here. That triangle is actually right here as well. We'll have that triangle in. We're gonna line that up and put it in. So we need to lift up this, drop the CPU in. You go ahead and clamp this down. So we have that in, we have that in place. Now we need to get our radiator prepped, or we already have it prepped. So we need to actually slide this into place. You need to watch as you put this in too, because there is, you need to make sure your uh, CPU cable is not behind it, or it's, when you go to put it down, you're not gonna be able to push this down all the way to screw it in. But we do need to hook our CPU fans up. So here's our CPU fans. We go into this top slot right up here. Okay, we got that on. Make sure it's everything's lined up. We're good. Uh, the next we'll have the AIO power. And again, when you plug these in, you'll see these little grooves. Make sure they line up with the back plate here. Everything lines up properly. Okay. So that's our AO power. This will be our rear fan that we'll put in right here. Um, we are going to have to backtrack some of these cables in once we drop this in here, um, but we'll have to do that after the fact because again, this case is not very uh, big hands friendly. All right, so I'm going to try to take some of these cables and tuck them up, actually up under this plate, and that's how we'll do cable management for these. Um, there are like little grooves kind of in place for you to be able to do it like that. And then this one will kind of backtrack through that hole um, up there. Now, you're probably watching me touch this, but this sticker's still on here. We haven't taken the sticker off yet. But we'll put our stuff in here and we'll put this in. I'm not gonna worry about pushing this all the way in yet because I need to get this in place. So, we're gonna take our Arctic Silver. Again, they give you some already. I don't know the brand of this. I'm not going to use this, um, but I will use the Arctic Silver that I already have. So we're going to go ahead and put some on. All right. We got that in there. Now we need to put this in. Take the tape off. I'm going to turn this in place. Which we're gonna have to do this. Make sure you get this the right way. So we want everything up at the top. All right, and we're gonna drop this on. Again, normally I like to put this on way before we ever drop the stuff in here, but it was a nightmare to try to deal with. So we're gonna hand tighten on one of these, not all the way, just a little bit. Get our next one on. All right, so we have that on but we need to actually tighten it down. When you go to screw these in, you want to do in an X pattern. So you want to go a few turns, a few turns, a few turns, a few turns, and just keep repeating that until all of them are tightened down. You don't need to overly torque them, and just tighten them down.
All right, now we need to put our back of our fan on or at least plug it in before we put this radiator in or we're gonna have a hard time getting to it. So, this will be the back fan, which they're the same fans. I was trying to go with the same theme. Um, we want this, either you want it like this to go up the top, which is usually your best bet because then it's easier to cable manage. Um, you don't usually want to put it this way because then it's just going to be kind of covering your motherboard. So you want it to try to go up at the top. So what we're going to do is plug this fan in. Now with these particular fans, when we plug it in the motherboard, we do have our Molex connector right here. So this will power the fan, but the Molex connector powers the LEDs in the fan. So we're going to need to put this and screw this in and then we'll do our cable management and pull that through. Um, some more. So we have that in. Now we're going to need to pull these through. All of these cables through. So let's set this up. So there we go. We got the Molex connector here. So with these Molex connectors, you'll see like the edges are rounded off, and some of them go to a corner. You just need to line these up the same way. And I'll just plug in. So we're good there. And once again, once we do all this stuff, we'll do the cable management in the back. Um, but for right now, we'll just leave this because we need to get a radiator in the rest of the way. There we go. So everything slid in and out of the way. And now we need to tighten this radiator back on here. Now our radiator is taken care of. Now we just need to do a little bit of maintenance back here. Because this looks like shit. Like a rat's nest. So our back plate is on. We have our cable management done to the back. So now let's put in our GPU. We need to take these off right here. Two screws right here for this plate. Slide our plate out. Now on your graphics card, Make sure you take off this little protector right here for your gold pins. And then we need to drop it into place. So now this, we have dual power here because some require more power than others. But the 1660 only requires one eight pin. So we're gonna use the one that's the furthest out so the rest that we can kind of hide behind this back plate. Got that set up. And now we need to screw this into place. All right, so we got that in place. We're gonna tuck this power cables back behind here. So this is a nice case and I really like it. However, once you start, you can see how much room you have in it once you start putting everything in. So again, normally I would put everything in this place here um, and do it that way, but we couldn't with the space we have for the radiators and everything else. So it is what it is. All right, so we are set, we're good to go. Before I move this, I'll just leave it like this so that when we power it on, You'll be able to see. All right. All right, so we got 
our RGB lights down there that are built into the motherboard, and then our power. And we are good to go. All right, and we are done. It took us about 30, 40 minutes to install Windows, install updates, install drivers, download this game. We've actually been having Hitman 2 on a test bench running for about two hours while we went and had dinner. Um, I was kind of expecting to come down here and hear this 1660 Ti scream, but it's actually not. It's actually doing really, it's actually pretty quiet. I was kind of surprised how well it's doing. We are running this test bench on ultra settings and we're averaging around 60 FPS. Sometimes that'll get as high as 120, 130 FPS. Um, I'm actually really surprised at how well this is doing. So. Um, there we go. Our tutorial is done. Our machine is built. I'm sure my dad will be happy with it. Again, he won't be running games like this, so I know he'll be happy with it. Uh, if you guys have any questions or any comments or anything else, leave them down there below, and I will do my best to answer any questions you have. You guys have a fantastic day. Peace. Um, no, that's that's fine. Uh, that's just what happens when you overclock it. It's 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 fine. Um, okay, cut it off.